Sika for allowing us to celebrate the heroes in our midst. We are living in extraordinary times as a groundswell of change is sweeping the world. Artists are stepping up as never before to lead the voice of change. And we are witnessing the point of view of women as never before in theater, in literature, in visual arts. And yes, art is a political act as we wrestle with thoughts of sexism, power, and confrontation. Sana Musasama, an artist extraordinaire whose outstanding achievement is more in line with being a great humanitarian, someone who is concerned with human welfare, compassionate, humane, unselfish, altruistic, generous, magnanimous, merciful, kind, and oh yes, an esteemed artist. I have followed her career for more than 30 years and have had the opportunity to observe her abilities as artist, community activist, academic, and friend. I saw an exhibition of hers at the June Kelly Gallery in Soho in the mid-90s. It was provocative. It had political content, but was also rich in its sensitivity to the human condition. Sana has never been afraid to needle the establishment or duel with oppressive conditions. Her own art might protest ritual female circumcision in Africa, attacking exploitation, or uncover and make visible comment on human folly as evident in one of her most poignant works, the abolitionist maple tree series that I just previously showed. She invents and reinvents themes in her work. Each time I see a new body of work, I am consistently surprised by the depth of the ideas, her flexibility, and her rich imagination. She is a visual philosopher, making serious statements about our time, questioning and jarring our consciousness. It is no wonder that I have included her in numerous exhibitions I have curated and in my book, as well as her vast ethnic collections, in this case, hats, which overlap with my own passion for making and curating hat exhibitions, like this one I did called Hattitude. But Sana is more. Feeling undereducated by her schooling, Sana began traveling at an early age as a way of a recovering and understanding identity and her cultural place. Clay was a geographic catalyst that brought her first to West Africa after her masters at Alfred. She ventured to Japan, China, Tibet, Peru, Costa Rica, but most recently and consistently to Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, and as she puts it, traveling became my education. It transformed me into a global citizen, equipping me with a platform upon which I became a more compassionate human being. Travel illuminated the conceptual relationship between her studio practice and her voice as a woman artist. Her work functions 
as a reinterpretation of personal and historical narratives, focusing on themes of gender, place, time, and diverse cultures, contemporary issues, and her travel journals. Traveling the world alone can be fraught with issues of safety for a woman. So, Sa so Sana was savvy enough to befriend local girls who soon became her chosen family. They guided me, they taught me, they protected and they loved me, she says. It is their lives that became monumental to me. Their stories were her visual fodder, such as the body of this series aptly called Girl Soldiers. Little girls recruited to fight in the civil wars of their land. Girls who dreamed of playing sports, went to school, wove beautiful baskets, and worked on farms. Their lives were suddenly and violently taken away from them and replaced with roles of war. Her emails over the years have brought me to tears. Here, for example, is Wren, the manager for the Apron and Pinafore Project created by Sana. Wren's parents were forced to fight in the Kumar Rouge, and he, she herself was forced into the sex trade. But it is her work with teenage girls that I will focus now for her consistent, dedicated, and outstanding achievement. Year after year, I think for more than 10, she has traveled to Cambodia during her winter semester break teaching at from Hunter College in New York City with suitcases of art supplies, materials not for herself, but for the young girls who are vulnerable to sexual and physical violence. Sana uses the art making process as a way of healing and bringing personal self esteem to a population that is in dire need of attention. <coughs> These very young girls are either recruited for acts of violence or sex, and in most cases, both. Sana is challenged by concerns surrounding the safety of women their rights of passage into adulthood, issues of chastity and other political and social issues regarding the female body which has permeated this very troubled population. She provides materials to sell, not their bodies. She brings normalcy to their lives, building on native skills and talents for sewing, weaving, and sculpting. They have created aprons, dresses, figurines, clothes, hats, bags, baskets, shoes, and many wondrous items that Sana then posts online for sale. Sana brings the same community leadership in her native New York as well. I admire her work with a program known as CASES, which offers alternatives to incar incarceration, primarily for teenage girls. She has developed meaningful art projects and life experience opportunities for these overlooked, undereducated populations. One project I remember is how she engaged Starbucks to sponsor work for these incarcerated teenagers to create mosaic tables for local Starbucks locations. This is civic mindedness and community leadership identifying through tough issues, I think at the highest level. Sana has impressed me with her physical and psychological sophistication and her uncanny ability to combine materials and activities in a variety of ways 
to improve the lives of those who she cares about. Her intellectual vigor, enthusiasm, and critical sensitivity expand notions of art and activism while challenging convention. Thus, it is with utmost respect for Sana and the humanity she has consistently demonstrated along with her sustained focus and tenacious commitment that I, along with Ensikas and the committee, her other support nominees were Matt Nolan and Jeffrey Mongrain, we wish to bestow Sana Musasama the Outstanding Achievement Award and wish her continued success. She uses her creative production to identity and expose deeply felt political beliefs, but also engages in real activism that is unquestionably in the realm of social justice. Thank you and love you, Sana. <laughs>